Take my bride, let's go for a ride in my new fangled automobile. Just where we will go, nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of the sleepy to steel, it's my new fangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. In my family, I'm known as a <clears throat> cheesy kind of guy. Jeremy Clarkston is correct about this American. I put cheese on everything. And in the U.S., the place most known for producing cheese is, of course, the state of Wisconsin. Yet, Wisconsin was also the home of some very significant mix of cars. For example, the Rambler, built by Thomas Jeffrey, which would eventually be purchased by and become Nash. But there was also Rambler's main local competitor. And today, we'll take a look at that neighboring Wisconsin car builder, Mitchell. The story begins in 1838, when a Scottish wheelwright named Henry Mitchell immigrated to the U.S. and opened a small wagon and carriage business in Kenosha. The Mitchell Wagon Company was a success, and business boomed so much that he soon outgrew his shop. He moved the company in 1854 a bit north to Racine, where there were larger facilities available, and the company continued to grow and prosper. By the 1860s, Mitchell wagons were advertised as the Monarchs of the Road. These were heavy-duty, Conestoga-style vehicles and were quite popular with the homesteaders heading west. His son-in-law, William Lewis, joined the company in 1864 and, over the next decade or so, took over the management of the company to allow Henry to retire. The company continued to grow and, by the 1880s, was the largest wagon maker in all of Cheeseland. 1896 was an important year for the Mitchell Company. By this time, William Lewis was running the company and his son, William Mitchell Lewis, had joined him. Young Billy had the idea to get into the bicycle business and so they bought out a local maker, the Beeb Wheelworks, to get into the business. Renaming it the Wisconsin Wheelworks, the younger Lewis enthusiastically pursued the business, believing it was the future of transportation in America. A few years later, he expanded production into making motorized bicycles and motorcycles. They were still not very practical, the Early Mitchell motorbikes of 1899 were even slower than pedaling one, but it did give a bit more boost on the hills, and so they did enjoy some modest success. In 1902, the design was greatly improved, and after a campaign of public demonstrations around the country, Mitchell motorcycles were selling quite well. But Billy Lewis had caught wind of automobiles. Companies like Winton, Oldsmobile, and their next-door neighbor, Rambler, were making cars and making money, and he wanted a piece of that action. So, in 1903, Mitchell entered the car business. The first offerings were decent ones for America at the time. Two front-engined runabouts, a four-stroke single-cylinder of four horsepower and a two-stroke air-cooled single making seven. Initial sales were modest, problems in getting the needed supplies to meet the demand of their low-priced cars, I mean the four horsepower could be had at 600 bucks, briefly hampered consumer confidence, but these issues were quickly rectified. 1903 also saw the emergence of the Ford Model A, and Mitchell gave their response. The following year, they introduced two new slightly larger models a twin cylinder of 7 horsepower, and a straight 4 of 16, both available with either air or water cooling. They were a bit pricier, starting at $750, but did sell. By 1906, Mitchell was making much bigger and more powerful touring cars, and at higher prices. 
There are five passenger 30 horsepower Model D4 costing $1,800. Yet they sold over 600 of them and over the next few years continued to grow into that market. Mitchell sold well for a relatively small company with various models available in the one to $2,000 range. By 1910, they had five different models available to accommodate several markets. Two runabouts with 30 horsepower engines, two touring cars also of 30 horsepower, and their Model S, a 50 horsepower touring car. Over 5,000 Mitchells were sold that year, and a song was written about them, not by Billy Murray, but by Charlie McDonald. Give me a spin in your Mitchell, Bill. Link in the description below if you'd like to give it a listen. William Lewis left the company in 1913 to start his own venture, and Mitchell went through somewhat of a revolving door of presidents over the next few years. The company continued to focus on the higher mid-market, and although sales were solid, they were not spectacular. The leadership at Mitchell believed that they had the presence in the market to be the trend-setting car company of America, and so set about to make that happen. The result was unveiled in 1920. The Mitchell Touring Car sported a straight six of 60 horsepower and styling that was new to the market. Though common today, the 1920 Mitchell slanted the radiator towards the cowl, and the overall lines of the car followed the same rakish angle. The idea was to give the impression of speed, even when standing still. The media dubbed the car the Drunken Mitchell, implying that either the car or its designers were inebriated, or you'd have to be drunk to buy one. Either way, the bad press doomed Mitchell, and the company was defunct by 1923, their facility being bought by Charles Nash and absorbed into his company. For a time, Mitchell was a quality car maker with a lot of potential and was one of the pioneering automakers in America. And they did it surrounded by cheese. Thanks for watching Vintage Car History, and we'll see you next week. Peace.